people search for Jesus and think that they found him. But in the end, they're going to realize one thing. They didn't find him, find him, find him, find him. Many people search for the truth and never find it. But if you want to know the truth about God, what we got to do? Good afternoon and welcome to the Word of Truth, the program that's designed to help you understand your Bibles. My name is Brother Obadiah and I'll be uh, your teacher today and read for me will be Brother Mike. And as always, we bring you a topic from the scriptures on this television program. And today's topic will be worship God according to knowledge. Worship God according to knowledge, because this is... <laughs> The Lord, from the very beginning, when he created man, he has always given man some kind of instruction, some kind of knowledge so that man could worship him according to his will. And the Lord has sent judges. He sent prophets, apostles, and even the Lord himself has come down in the flesh and taught. And later on, he's raised up other servants, uh, other servants. And also in these last days, the Lord continues to raise up servants and raise up those uh, who he's given knowledge so that we can give other people knowledge that they can worship God correctly. But for some reason, you always have those people who don't want to worship God according to knowledge. They want to worship God uh, according to whatever is convenient to them. But this is not what the Lord has required. The Lord requires us to worship him according to how he has it written in his word. And that is what this lesson is about. We must worship God according to the knowledge and the understanding that he set up. Now, we're going to start off in 1 Samuel 2, and we're going to pick it up in verse 2. Go ahead. There's none holy as the Lord. For there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. Now the Lord is a God of knowledge. And if he is a God of knowledge and he expects us to serve him and he's going to give us salvation, then obviously he has to transfer that knowledge to us that we can do it the right way. He says, so the Lord is a God of knowledge and by him actions are weighed and he is going to judge us according to the knowledge and the understanding that he has uh, uh, given his service in every generation. This is what we're going to be judged by. So if the Lord is a God of knowledge, then we must seek out the knowledge of God. Go to Hosea, the fourth chapter, and we're going to uh, read verse six, Hosea four and verse six. Because if everyone could worship the Lord according to how you feel uh, day to day, then uh, no one would be cut off. We wouldn't need the Bible. We wouldn't need in any of these. We wouldn't need preachers either. Because you could just do whatever you felt like doing uh, on that particular day. But the Lord had a whole nation of people set up. And he gave them laws and statutes and judgments. And he did all of that. And he sent judges and prophets and apostles. And he had this book translated over and over again uh, throughout the years. So that we wouldn't have any excuse. Or we wouldn't be ignorant of how to worship him. He did all of that so that we would have the proper understanding on serving him. Hosea 4 and uh, read verse 6. Go ahead, brother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now the Lord, Lord is saying, hey, my people are destroyed for uh, lack of knowledge. And if you look at our people today, that is exactly what the problem is. We have no knowledge of God. We have no knowledge of who we really are for the most part. So we, are, we destroy ourselves because you don't have anything to hold on to. You don't have anything to be proud of. So you just out here with no understanding. We are destroyed because of that. Because when the Lord tried to give this knowledge to our forefathers, they, they repeatedly, they rejected this knowledge and they didn't want it. So what happens? The people are destroyed 
because of this lack of knowledge. Did you finish verse 6? No, I'm in fin the middle. Finish verse 6, brother. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. And if you reject the knowledge of God, he is going to reject you. You cannot constantly walk away from the word of God and reject it and think that the Lord is going to give you a free pass into the kingdom. That is not how it works. If you reject his knowledge, then the Lord is going to reject you because he is a God of knowledge. Go ahead. That thou shalt be no priest to me, uh -huh. seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. And that is what's wrong with our, with our people. See, our forefathers, they, they rejected the word of God. They rejected his law. And so now, our, uh, we being their children, their offspring, we are, are, are suffering because of this. And we suffer today because we still don't want to keep the law of God. We still, as a whole, we, we have no interest whatsoever in serving the God of our fathers. We want to do everything else except for serve the God of Israel. And this is why we are in trouble. Go to Jeremiah 18 and pick it up at verse 11. Jeremiah 18 and verse 11. Go ahead, brother. Now, therefore, go to speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Return ye now every one from his evil way and make your ways and your doings because good. Because the Lord kept warning them. He said, look, I'm going to do you some harm. So I'm telling you before I bring this on you, you need to turn from your, your, your wicked devices. You need to stop doing these things because I, I done decided that I'm going to bring some trouble upon you. And the Lord has brought trouble not only upon Israel, he's brought trouble upon this, this whole earth. And then he's going to even bring a time of trouble like the world has never seen and will never uh, see again, which is the great tribulation. He's going to bring this on the earth simply because uh, people do not want to serve him. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to walk in their own imaginations of their own heart, but nobody wants to serve God. Go ahead. And they said, there's no hope, but we will walk after our own devices. And when you say there is no hope, when you give up hope, then you do anything. You say, forget it. I'm going to do whatever I feel. They say, hey, it ain't no hope. So being that there's no hope, hey, we ain't going to serve God. We're going to walk after our own devices. I'm going to go out and I'm going to do it my way because I ain't got no hope. And being that we have not been taught the knowledge of God, we don't hope in the God of Israel. So, we, so hey, I'm just going to do what, whatever I feel like doing. I'm going to get... What I, what I want to get, I'm going to get it my way. I ain't going to get it according to the word of God or within the, within the realms of the commandments of God. I'm just going to do it however I can get it. Go ahead. And we will every one do the imagination of his evil heart. And that's what the people say, and that's what the people say now. Hey, I'm going to do whatever comes to my mind. I'm going to say the first thing that comes to my head, I'm going I'm, I'm to say it. I'm not going to even consider. I'm just going to do it. However, I feel like because rejecting the word of God, rejecting the knowledge of God, then, hey, there's no hope. What verse was that? Uh, that was 12. Go ahead. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, ask ye now among the heathen who have heard such things. The virgin of Israel have done a very horrible thing. Skip down to verse 15. Because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity. And they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths, to walk in paths in a way not cast up. And that's what happens. Our forefathers, hey, they, they forgot about the God of Israel. And down in these, last, uh, in, in these last days, we have, for the most part, forgotten about the God of Israel. We, have, we don't have the understanding. So, hey, you, just, you, 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 serve, uh, you serve things, gods that are no gods, and you do things that really need, lead to no profit. We do things in vain because we have forgotten about the knowledge of God. We have put the true and living God to the side, and we have been walking so long uh, in the imagination of our own hearts. But it is not to our help. We have to get back to the scriptures and get back to serving God according 
to the knowledge and to the ways that he set up. Now, let's go to uh, Romans 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Romans 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead, brother. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not, a, but not according to knowledge. And a lot of people have a zeal for God. They have a zeal for Christ, but it is not according to knowledge. That is why this TV program is, is, is set up. It is set up so that we can impart the understanding that the Lord has given us. We can give it to you because you cannot serve God strictly uh, based on zeal. It's good to have a zeal for Christ and a zeal for God, but it has to be according to knowledge. When you start to serve God and you start to do the works of a servant of God, it has to be done with some knowledge and understanding, not just doing what you feel is right. It has to be according to knowledge. And this is what Paul is saying. Hey, he want all Israel to be saved because Paul was an Israelite. But he said, hey, they got a zeal for God, but it's really not according to knowledge. Go ahead. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And you cannot do what you think is righteous and at the same time try to deal with the Lord's righteousness. You gonna have to we get so we have to put what we feel is right sometimes to the side because it may not be what the Lord say is right or wrong. He says so because they ignorant of God's righteousness, which, hey, they really don't know. The only thing you can do if you really don't know is to come up with something that you think is right. And that's how people have established their own righteousness. That's why you have all these different doctrines that came from a lack of understanding of the scriptures. So doctrines were created and now we have all these different doctrines, but they they may have been found on some kind of zeal to worship, but they are not according to knowledge. And that is the problem. They are not according to the knowledge contained in the scriptures. Now, let's go to um, 2 Timothy 4, and we're going to pick it up at verse 2. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 2. Second Timothy 4. And we're going to pick it up at verse 2. Go ahead, brother. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Repute, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Uh -huh. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. So Paul is letting them know, look, you, you hold on to this doctrine and this is this is how you you know, this is how you preach. You, you, you do it with with the proper doctrine. He said, because the time is going to come where sound doctrine. Hey, they're not going to want to uh, endure it. And right now we in those times. The Lord always has his servants preaching sound doctrine. But you got a whole lot of doctrine out there in the name of Jesus that is not sound at all. And people are flocking they are flocking to this doctrine that really had that really will, will not profit them anything go ahead but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and that is what everybody is on everybody nobody wants to be told the truth because if you tell me the truth that means now i have to look at myself because the truth is gonna hurt it's gonna pierce you so instead of me feeling bad i don't want to feel bad what i want you to do is tell me something that i like to hear Tell me about the manifold blessings of Christ. And as long as you keep telling me about the blessings, I'm going to keep paying you my tithes. But if you start telling me that I can't steal, kill, and I can't go uh, commit adultery when my old lady make me mad, then I'm leaving. I don't want you to tell me right. That is what the Lord said. They say, don't prophesy to me right things. Prophesy to me smooth things. Make me feel good. This is why that sound doctrine is frowned upon by a lot of people. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear the things that make them feel good. They want to hear, they don't want to uh, uh, deal with 
the, 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 the struggles of everyday life. I want you to entertain me and make me forget about all those other problems I have. But that is not the way that we worship God. What verse was that, brother? Uh, verse 4. Uh, read verse 4. And they shall turn their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Listen, that is the only thing that, 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 will, that will happen when you turn away from the truth. I don't care what kind of truth it is. When you stop dealing with what's true, the only thing left is to start believing things that are not true. Fables, things, lies, and all of that. If you turn away from the truth, that is the only thing that is left. What's left are fables and, and untruths. And that's what's happened with the word of God. We have turned away from the truth of the gospel. So now we deal with fables, things that we know are not even in the Bible. Like Christmas. Not in the Bible, not in the way that it's being taught. The Lord tell you don't deal with that tree and all of that, but he don't he don't tell you nothing about worshiping that tree. It don't say nothing about Christ being born you no know, December 25th. People know that, but they still will do it anyway. Why? Because I don't want to deal with the truth. I want to deal with this fable. It's not that we're trying to attack what you believe. What we are trying to let you know is this, this way of thinking is why we are in a position we are in right now. We refuse knowledge. We want to deal with fables. We have to stop that and turn to the knowledge of God. Now, that's good. Um, Let's go to uh, Titus, the first chapter. Titus, the first chapter, and then we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Now, right here, uh, he is talking about how a bishop has to be. He's talking about a bishop being blameless and all of that. But he says some other things here, and it applies not only to one who wants to be a bishop, but to everybody. Go ahead. But a love of hospitality, a love of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. Uh-huh. Holding fast the faithful word as he have been taught. And as if you have been taught this faithful word, hold fast to it. Don't don't give the word of God up because uh, the scriptures tell you that all who going to live godly in Christ Jesus, you're going to suffer persecution just like your master suffered persecution. That is what's going to happen. But hold fast to this word. Go ahead. That he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Because that is the only way you're going to be able to exhort, and that's the only way you're going to be able to convince those who may not necessarily believe. It is by that sound doctrine. So you have to hold fast unto that word. Go ahead. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. And he said, yeah, there are many vain talkers, you know, and unruly people. He said, especially those of the circumcision. It's like that today. A whole lot of people, when it comes to uh, uh, the word of God, they say a lot of things that, that are vain. They are not going to help you get salvation at all. Go ahead. Whose mouths must be stopped. Uh -huh. Who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. And just like it is today, it was like that back in that day. They teaching things they shouldn't be teaching, but they all doing it for money. They all doing it, you know, for, for some kind of financial gain. It's, it's not about uh, helping you get salvation. It's, a, it's about for filthy lucre's sake. So, hey, they'll teach you whatever. Whatever, whatever makes you uh, open up your wallet or your pocketbook and give up the money. That's, that's, that's what they're going to teach you gonna make you feel good he but this has been going on for a long time this is why we have fallen so far what verse was that uh, verse 9 you know, verse 10 or 11 go ahead whose mouths must be stopped who subvert whole houses teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucas sake uh -huh. one of themselves even a prophet of their own said the creations are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Mm -hmm. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, uh -huh. not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Listen, don't give heed to Jewish fables or any other kind of fables that's going to cause you to turn from the truth. Don't give heed to commandments of men as is concerning the word of God. Deal with the commandments of God, not 
the commandments of men that they have taken and twisted up the word of God and come up with their own doctrine. Don't deal with those things. Deal with the sound doctrine. Deal with the knowledge of God and not with the so-called knowledge of men. Now, let's go to uh, Jeremiah 8, and we're going to pick it up at verse, verse 7. Jeremiah 8, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane, and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment Lord of the Lord. Lord said, hey, you know, these, these animals know exactly what they're supposed to do. He said, but my own people, they don't know the judgment of the Lord. Go ahead. How do you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. Yeah, the Lord say it's in vain. I didn't did all this writing for nothing because, hey, you're not even following it. Mm -hmm. So what was the purpose of me having the scribe write all of this? You don't, y'all don't follow it anyway. Right. It was all in vain. Go ahead. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Uh huh. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? You say, hey, what wisdom is in them? Once you reject the word of the Lord, then it ain't you have no wisdom in you. Not according to God. Ain't no wisdom. That's why he told him back when he had Israel in the wilderness. He said, hey, these commandments, hey, this is your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations. But if you reject the word of the Lord, then you have no wisdom. And without that wisdom, you can't serve God correctly because God is a God of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Let's go to uh, Ephesians 5 and pick it up at verse 13. Ephesians 5 and 13. Go ahead. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Uh-huh. He said, Now the ones that sleep, you know, wake up. Not not so much a, a physical sleep, but you spiritually, you sleep. You spiritually dead. Arise out of that. It's time to stop. You know, just going for anything that sound good. Find out for yourself how it is you're supposed to serve God. You don't believe what I'm saying? That's fine. Open up your Bible and find out for yourself. That's all you got to do. Wake up out of your sleep. Go ahead. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. He said, look, don't walk as fools. Be wise. Go ahead. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not under unwise. Be ye not unwise. Stop talking about you waiting on the spirit. Which one? Mm -hmm. Which spirit? That's the problem. Everybody, people like saying what spirit, the spirit done told them. But you don't, how you know? You don't even know which spirit you was, you was dealing with. Because if you don't understand these scriptures, then you don't know. It's a whole lot of spirits out here. Go ahead. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord he is. He said, don't be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. You have to understand it. Everybody must understand what the will of the Lord is for themselves. Mm -hmm. You can't just count on the preacher to make you understand, because he might not be on that. <laughs> His motives might be something totally different than what you might think it is. <laughs> So he ain't going to tell you what the will of the Lord is. So you better know for yourself. Be not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Worship God according to his knowledge. Now, let's go to uh, 2 Timothy 3, and we're going to pick it up at, at, at verse uh, 14, because he said, you know, hey, don't be unwise. Understand what the will of the Lord is. And we just going to let the scriptures tell us, you know, how it is. You, you get this wisdom and understanding. Second Timothy three. And we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 14. Go ahead. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through and, the and, faith. And this is the only thing that's going to make you wise unto salvation. 
I ain't talking about wives according to, you know, some kind of uh, 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 knowledge in, in this life. But as far as salvation is concerned, it is the scriptures that make you wise into salvation through the faith that is in Christ Jesus. Finish that. Which is in Christ Jesus. Uh huh. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Stop trying to figure out, you know, what's what what what's a mis uh, 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 mistranslation and people going off talking about what part of the book ain't right. Whatever part you say ain't right, that's on you. But I know it says all scripture, meaning all was given by inspiration of God. Mm -hmm. So who is any man to, to come up now and say what part is good and what part is not good? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And it's profitable for doctrine. And that is where the doc our doctrine comes from. It, this, it comes from the scriptures. That's where it's supposed to come from. Go ahead. For reproof. Uh -huh. For correction. It is for reproof and for correction. You have to line up your life according to the scriptures. And most of this correction should be, should be self-correction. Because it's easy to look at somebody else and point your finger. But when you got to point the finger back at yourself, mm -hmm. that's a whole different story. Use the scriptures to correct yourself in your everyday walk as a servant of God. Go ahead. For instruction in righteousness. And that it is for instruction in righteousness. It is the scriptures. The, th this is what makes us wise unto salvation. It is understanding the scriptures. Let's go to Luke 24. Excuse me. And we're going to pick it up at verse 15. Because we want to look at what the Lord told his, 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 his disciples after he died and rose again. And now they're walking around and they don't know what's going on. And now they doubting from the scriptures they don't know what's up because they thinking like man we you know we thought he was the one that was going to deliver Israel and and hey it's been three days since he died people saying that you know he wasn't there you know at, at, at the sepulcher and all of that and the Lord is going to rebuke them but he is going to do it with the scriptures now Luke 24 and pick it up at uh verse 15 go ahead and it came to pass that while they commune together and reason Jesus, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another, as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleophas, Cleopas, answered and said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and has not, and has not known the things which are to come to pass there in these days? Uh -huh. And he said unto them, what things? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and before God and all the people. Uh -huh. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. So now they're running down the story to him. They don't know it's him, but they're running down the story. Go ahead. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, Today is the third day since these things were done. So now they don't know. They say, hey, we thought he was the one that would, would, would redeem Israel. But, you know, hey, this has been the third day since, you know, since all these things happened. Go ahead. Yeah, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. Uh -huh. And certain of them which were with us, went to the sepulcher and found it, even so as the women had said. But him they saw not. Now the Lord is going to reply to them, and this, this, is, this is such a powerful scripture, because he is not going to even talk about the miracles he did and, 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 and the miracles that they saw him do and all of that. He is simply going to tell them that they were some fools because they ain't even believe the scriptures. Go ahead. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. He said, O fools and slow to believe all that the prophets have written. He didn't say nothing about old fools, slow to believe all the miracles you seen me do and all the stuff I told you. He said, man, you, you foolish because you don't believe the things that the prophets have written mm -hmm. in the scriptures. Go ahead. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? 
uh -huh. and beginning at Moses and all the prophets. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And it said beginning at Moses and all the prophets, which what we call today the Old Testament. It said he, he uh, expounded unto them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. He went to the scriptures and he showed them the things concerning himself. Even though he was standing there, raised from the dead, still he went to the scriptures and said, let me show you this. So if, if Christ is putting that much weight on the scriptures, how is it that you don't put that much weight on the scriptures? Exactly. That just don't make sense. The Lord put all that weight on the scriptures. And we walk around, we read one or two scriptures and then we wait on the spirit to tell us everything else. Hmm. Well, we wait on the preacher to tell us what it is we shall do without even checking on what the Lord said we shall do. What verse was that? That was 26. Read verse, uh, uh, 20, uh, skip down to verse 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Uh -huh. then, opened he, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scripture. He said then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures because these are what is going, uh, what's going to make us wise into salvation. It is the scriptures. It is the scriptures. This is what the Lord left. Uh, this is what the Lord gave us to make us wise. This, this is the knowledge that you have to have if you are going to get salvation, the knowledge of God. And it is contained in these scriptures. It is contained in the Bible. Let's go to um, 2 Timothy 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 15. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15. Go ahead. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I like this scripture because it says to study, just like you got to study anything else to have some knowledge of it. You have to study it. And it is the same thing with the scriptures. You have to study to show yourself approved unto God. When you study, you show the Lord that you are seeking out his knowledge and his righteousness, that you are seeking his kingdom. That is how the Lord will uh, start to uh, increase your understanding in the scriptures. It's when you study. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Go ahead. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodly. What are these profane and vain babblings? These are things that, I, I, that you can just say, you can come up off the top of your head with. They don't have to be what's written in the scriptures. They could just be some vain and profane babblings. He says, stay away from those things because the only thing that those things lead to is more ungodliness. Mm -hmm. That's what vain and profane babblings lead to. It leads to ungodliness because if, if you keep dealing with things that are fables or things that are not written in this book, and it's gonna, then it's just going to get you further and further away from where you need to be. It's going to take you away from from the knowledge of God. It's not going to lead you to the knowledge of God. But if you stay in these scriptures and you base your doctrine and your life on the scriptures, it's, it can do nothing but get you closer and closer to the, un, to the knowledge of God and to salvation. That is what this is all about. Let's go to uh, Psalms 14 and verse 2. Psalms 14, and we're going to pick it up at verse 2. So study the scriptures. Study your scriptures. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Psalms 14, and we're going to uh, read verse 2. Go ahead, brother. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men. Now, the Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men. And what is he looking for? Go ahead. To see if there were any that did understand and seek God. See, the Lord is always looking to see, is there anybody that understands and any, is there anybody that's really seeking out God? The Lord looked down 
in the past and he's looking down right now. The Lord is looking for those people who are truly seeking his righteousness and who really want to understand his word. Because the Lord is going to give you that understanding if you are truly seeking it. So the Lord is always looking. So when you study your scriptures, hey, the Lord is looking. You showing yourself that you are worthy of this, the knowledge of God. You proving yourself to the Lord by studying. You showing that you are seeking this because the Lord is looking down and he's trying to figure out. He's trying. He's looking to see who is really whose heart is really with him and who really wants to serve him. Let's go to Malachi three and pick it up at verse 16. And not only is the Lord looking down, but then the Lord is also doing something else on those who seek him out and who speak upon, who speak on his name. Malachi three. And we're going to read verse 16. Go ahead. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. Uh -huh. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And the book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Because the Lord is looking down. So now the ones that uh, uh, speak often to another and feared the Lord, it said the Lord hearkened and he heard it. Of course he hearkened and heard it because that's what he's looking for. He's always looking for those that's, that's seeking his righteousness. He said the book of remembrance was written for the ones that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. That's the book I want to be in. That's the book you want to be in. Mm -hmm. But you got to seek out the knowledge of God. You got to do the things that are required to get your name in this book. But this is what time it is. The Lord, see, a lot of people think the Lord ain't looking. Say, hey, Lord, don't see us. Because I've been doing what I've been doing for a long time and ain't nothing mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. But the book will tell you, hey, sometime the Lord step back and he let you do all the wickedness you want to do. But at the time appointed, everybody got to pay. At the time appointed, everybody got to pay. You gonna have to be, you gonna be held accountable for all your works. Yes, sir. But the Lord is writing them names down in that book for those that fear Him and speak upon His name. Let's go to Jeremiah nine and pick it up at verse twenty-three. Jeremiah nine. And we're going to pick it up at verse 23. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Hey, if you know you, you got a little wisdom according to the world, he said, don't even don't glory in that wisdom. Go ahead. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. The one that's strong and mighty, he say, hey, don't, don't glory in your, in your might. Go ahead. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. He say, not let the one that's, that has riches don't glory in them riches. Go ahead. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. He said, the one that glory, glory in the fact that you know him. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord is the one that can give you might. He can give you riches and he gives you wisdom and he gives you uh, salvation. So glory that you know him, because if you truly know God, then you truly have the knowledge of God. You know his word. You can save yourself. That is what we should be glorying in as Christians. Go ahead. That I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. See, This is what the Lord delights in. Don't be puffed up because you can uh, recite some scriptures. Just thank God that you know them scriptures and understand what they mean. This is what we should be glorying in, glorying in the fact that we know the God of Israel. Now, let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 1 and pick it up at verse 17. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 17. Go ahead. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, 
lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. He said, hey, not with wisdom or words. He said, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Go ahead. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Uh huh. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. See, the one that's going to perish, when you start preaching uh, Jesus Christ crucified for your sins, they look at you like, man, whatever. Mm -hmm. But to the ones that believe and the ones that's going to be saved, it is the power of God. Go ahead. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. That's why the Lord say, don't glory in your little wisdom, because the Lord say, hey, I'm going to destroy all, all this wisdom that, that, that these people think they got. I'm going to destroy it. Go ahead. And I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Uh huh. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Look, uh, a man thinks... It, uh, a, a lot of men, they, they think they think that they are gods themselves. Mm -hmm. Forget about believing in the gods. You got people that think they gods because they got a little bit of so-called wisdom. But the Lord, he said, hey, the Lord is going to destroy the wisdom of this world. Go ahead. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. All the wisdom that these men had, they ain't no God. Go ahead. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that be believe. He said, but it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save those that truly believe. Go ahead. For the Jews require a sign, uh -huh. and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Uh -huh. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block. And it was a stumbling block to them uh, uh, in the days of old, and it is a stumbling block now. Go ahead. And unto the Greeks foolishness. Uh -huh. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Uh -huh. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, uh -huh. and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Uh -huh. For ye see your calling, brethren, how, have, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. He said, now, understand your calling. He said, hey, not many wise men according to the flesh. And not many mighty men, not many nobles are even called mm -hmm. because this is how the Lord operates. When the Lord picked his, when the Lord picked his disciples, he didn't pick no Pharisees. Mm -hmm. He didn't run to get him no Levites. He went and got him some fishermen and a publican and all that. He, he didn't even deal with that. He didn't even deal with no Pharisees and all that as far as when he when he chose his when he uh, the only one was Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles. Paul was a Pharisee, but them 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 first twelve, hey, the Lord, the Lord didn't even deal with, with them. Because that is how the Lord operates. Man is caught up on, you know, titles and and, and your stature in the community and all of that. And we look to those individuals as being uh, wise and being uh, uh, people that we should follow. But the Lord is going to take the things that are uh, 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 considered foolishness and he's going to raise those things and those people up to be rulers. Go ahead. 27. Uh huh. But God have chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Uh huh. And God have chosen the weak things of this world to confound the things which are mighty. Uh huh. And base things of the world and things which are despised have God chosen. Yeah. And things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Uh -huh. That no flesh should glory in his presence. And the Lord does it this way so no flesh is going to be able to glory in his presence. And say, you chose me because, see, I was already a king. No. The Lord is going to take a peasant and raise him up and be a king and take a king and make him a peasant. No flesh is going to be able to glory uh, 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 boast himself in the sight of the Lord because the Lord takes the things that are based and he confounds the things that the world considered to be uh, mighty and wise with the things that are uh, uh, based. Go ahead. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, uh -huh. who of God is made unto wisdom, unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, uh -huh. that according as, as it is written, he, have, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. And we read that. We read in Jeremiah. Let, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, the, uh, nor the uh, uh, mighty man glory in his might, nor the rich man glory in his riches. But glory in the fact, if you're going to glory anything, glory in the fact that you know the Lord. Now, let's go to uh, Acts 17.
and pick it up at verse 16. Acts 17 and verse 16. Go ahead. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Now, Paul was in Athens and, you know, he's looking at all this idolatry. You know, you had all these people in this city who was so-called wise according to the flesh. They didn't have the wisdom of God, but they were wise according to man's standards. But they didn't even know God and all that wisdom like we was just reading. The world and all their wisdom don't know God. Go ahead. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them, with them that met with them. Uh -huh. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered them. And some said, what will his babblers say? Other, other some, he seemeth to be a set of forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. See, all that was foreign to them. But they supposed to be smart. These was philosophers. Philosophers supposed to have some kind of, you know, special understanding about life and nature and all of that stuff. But what he was saying was they was like, man, what is this babbler? He a babbler. What is he talking about? Resurrection. Jesus Christ. They say, what is this? Some strange gods. What is he talking about? Mm -hmm. But you wise. But you don't even know that because they didn't have the wisdom of God. Go ahead. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine, whereof thou speakest, is. See, hey, oh, man, what's this new doctrine? Mm -hmm. I got to hear this. This wasn't no new doctrine. This was the same word that the Lord gave his prophets in the days of old. This was the same word that the Lord had always been giving out. But they wanted to know, what is this new doctrine you talking about? And that's how it is sometimes when you start preaching the word of God. You start reading scriptures and people look at you like, man, where'd you get that from? The same, the Bible, the same one you got in your house. That's where I got it from. But it was a new doctrine. Go ahead. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. Uh-huh. We would know, therefore, what things, what these things mean. He said, hey, man, you talking some strange stuff, man, but we want to know what you're talking about. Go ahead. For all the Athenians and strangers were, were there, spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. And people the same way, they want to hear some new, some new thing and, or, or, you know, they want to have some kind of special insight that ain't nobody else got. That's why when you read plain black and white letters out of the book, that ain't good enough. I already know that. Tell me something I don't know. Tell me some new stuff that don't nobody else know. Go ahead. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. He said, I perceive that y'all are just too superstitious. Just like now. People more super, they believe more in superstitions than they, than they believe in scriptures that say, Thou shalt not commit adultery. People are all superstitious about everything else, but the simplicity that is in Christ. Nobody want to deal with that. They, everybody want to deal with something new so they can feel like they have some special knowledge, a special insight over everybody else. Go ahead. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the, own, to the unknown God. He said, so now he said, because, you know, I, I, don't, I walked past and I done seen this altar and you got this inscription saying to the unknown God. Now, these are philosophers and people who sit around all day to find out something new and they don't even know who God is. They say the unknown God. Go ahead. Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship. He said whom therefore you ignorantly worship. Just like in these days, a lot of us, we worship God not according to his knowledge, but we worship God in ignorance. Mm -hmm. Because we really don't know what we are doing. It's like Jesus told the woman. He said, you worship, uh, you know not what, because salvation is of the Jews. Go ahead. Him declare I unto you. He said, him, I'm going to declare unto you. Now, that's good. Let's go to uh, Psalms 111. And we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Psalms 111. And we're going to read verse 10.
Go ahead, brother. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And if we believe this scripture, then you would not say that you are not supposed to fear God. If you ain't supposed to fear God, then you don't have no wisdom. It said uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So you at the at the bare minimum have to at least fear God. But when you take away fear and God and you teach people that God love you no matter what you do and you're going to somehow slip in the, and slip in the kingdom of God no matter what you do, then there's no more fear. And that means ain't no wisdom. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to make it anyway, why I got to keep some commandments? I'm going to make it anyway. That's what you told me. So I ain't got to be obedient. So you take away the fear, you have taken away the wisdom and understanding that you need to serve God and get in his kingdom. He said, but this is the, uh, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's why it's written, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That, that is a requirement. That ain't something that is optional. You supposed to fear God. Go ahead. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Uh -huh. His praise endure forever. And a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. If you do not do his commandments, then you do not have a good understanding. That is that that is that is the simplest thing in the world. You don't have a good understanding because the Lord is not going to deal with a person that refused to keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. He is not going to give you the wisdom and understanding if you don't fear him and you don't even care to even keep one or two commandments. You ain't going to keep none of it. But all of a sudden now the Holy Ghost is dealing with you. I don't see how. Holy Ghost can't be dealing with somebody that don't fear God and don't keep no commandments. The Holy Ghost deal with those who seek after God and his righteousness. The Holy Ghost brings to your remembrance all the things that the Lord have said. But all the things that the Lord have said is found in the volume of the book. This is all very simple. We have to stop dealing with fables and we have to start dealing with the re with the reality of the scriptures. You got to fear God to get your foot in the door to some decent understanding and you got to keep these commandments. That that is all that is the way it is. Go to Psalms 1 and pick it up at verse 1. Just go to Psalms 1 and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel, the counsel of the ungodly, mm -hmm. nor standeth in the way of sinners, uh -huh. nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Blessed is the man that don't deal with that. Not blessed is the man that hang out with sinners and scorners <laughs> and all of that, because that's how it almost seems. <laughs> blessed is the one that don't deal with that. Go ahead. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Uh-huh. And in his law doth he, doth he meditate day and night. See, the one, the, the one whose delight is in the law of the Lord and he meditates in the law, hey, that is the one that is blessed. Go to Romans 2 and pick it up at verse 11. Romans 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 11 because we're going to let uh, the apostle Paul tell you about the law. That way it means more <laughs> if Paul tell you. Romans 2 and 11. Go ahead. For there is no respect of persons with God. Uh -huh. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. Uh -huh. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Uh -huh. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Now Paul said this, for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law. You can take that however you want to. But Paul said it. Let's go to uh, let's go to Psalms 107 and we're going to pick it up at verse 17. Psalms 107 and we're going to pick it up at verse 17. When you get it, brother, go ahead. Fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted. He said fools because of their transgressions and iniquities are afflicted. Why are they fools? Because they don't have no, enough sense just to stop doing it. And you stop being afflicted for that. Go ahead. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat. Uh-huh. And they draw near unto the gates of death. Uh-huh. 
Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, uh-huh. and he saveth them out of all their because distress. Because the Lord is merciful. You cry to the Lord, he'll give you an out, but you got to take it. But this is how the Lord is going to heal you, though. Go ahead. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. See, this is how you're going to be delivered. The Lord is going to send his word to heal you and deliver you from your destructions because the word of God is going to tell you, stop doing these things start doing these things and when you listen and take heed to the word of god then you start to you are healed by the word that is how the lord is gonna uh, heal you with his word john 6 and read verse 63 brother john 6 and we're gonna read verse 63 when you get it go ahead and read it it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing. Uh-huh. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And that is what his spirit and that is what life is. He said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. One more place, John 12 and read in uh, verse 47. John 12. And we're going to pick it up at verse 47. Go ahead, brother. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Uh huh. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. He said, now he that rejected me and received not my words, you got one that judge you. He said, the word that I have spoken, that is what's going to judge you in the last day. Go ahead and read 49. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment. What I should say and what I should speak. So if you reject the word of Christ, then you are rejecting the word of the most high God. And if you do that, you in trouble because that word that the father gave his son and that he gave his servants, the prophets and all of that. That is the word that's going to judge you in the last day. So I thank you for joining us here on the word of truth. And I thank you for listening to my lesson Worship God according to knowledge. And I hope that you'll tune in next week where we'll be giving you, uh, uh, we'll be bringing you another topic from the scriptures. Please read your Bibles and keep the commandments of God. Thank you and have a good evening. Many people search for Jesus and think that they found him. But in the end, they're going to realize one thing they didn't find him, find him, find him, find him. Many people search for the truth and never find it. But if you want to know the truth about God, what we got to do?